Let's look at another example of finding the centroid of an area. So here I have a U-shaped area, and it has dimensions of 50 millimeters by 40 millimeters, but it also has a, a cutout of 30 millimeters by 10 millimeters in the middle of it. And so I'd like to find the centroid of this area. And I'm going to do this using the same technique that I had before. So I'm going to break the system up into simple areas. So one could think of breaking this up, for example, into three rectangles and doing the calculation. But I want to show you a way in which you can do this with just two rectangles. And so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to break the area up into two parts. So I have the area A1, which is the entire rectangular area of 50 by 40. And then I'm going to subtract from it the integral over A2, which is the area of the cutout. And that gives me the total integral of the system. So the way I'm going to go move forward is I'm then just going to build my table. And notice that the way I've set up my coordinate axes, I have a vertical line of symmetry at x equals 0. So I have the result already that xc is equal to 0. So I don't have to calculate the x value of the centroid because of the way I place my coordinate system. So if I build my table, I have the area of part 1, which is 2,000 millimeters squared, and the area of part 2, which is minus 300. I put the minus sign because I'm going to subtract at the end. So that's 30 times 10. And so the total area is 1,700 millimeters squared. The centroid of area 1 is 25 millimeters. Area 1 is the whole rectangle, including the cutout. The centroid of area 2 is 15 millimeters in the y direction. And the products then are 50,000 and minus 4.5 thousand. If I add those together, I get 45 and a half thousand millimeters cubed. And now if I divide that 45 and a half thousand millimeters cubed by 1700 millimeters squared, I end up with a final result of 26.7 millimeters. So this is a point that's sitting just below the top of the cutout. So that gives me the centroidal location. for this problem. So it's just another way of doing this and you can so if you have areas that are cutouts you can treat them using negative signs in, in the relationship for computing the total area. There are two remarks that I'd like to make about computing centroids. Number one is the centroid of the area is really only useful for the case of uniform loads. So if you have a constant load on, on the area and you're trying to find a point force characterization in where it acts you're trying to compute the centroid, but that's only going to work if you have a uniform load. If you don't have a uniform load, you have to go ahead and do the integral out by hand. The other one is that if you're dealing with 3D problems, you're going to have a z-coordinate, and the centroid of the z-coordinate is going to be given by a similar formula. And the divisor now is the volume of the object, and the integral happens over the volume of the object. And you'll have a similar relationship for xc and yc where it's one over the volume and integral over the volume of the respective coordinate.